On September 23, 2005, residents in a small town of Hormigueres, Puerto Rico, would hear multiple gunshots at around 3 p.m. Later, they would find out the old man they knew as Don Lewis would be dead after a gunfight involving the FBI was actually Filiberto Ojeda Rios. For Puerto Rico, he was a nationalist leader, but for the FBI, he was one of their most wanted criminals. Today, we will be talking about Filiberto Ojeda Rios and the controversial firefight against the FBI that led to his death. Before we jump in, if you're new here, howdy, and if you're returning, it's good to see you again. All right. So how did Filiberto Ojeda Rios get notoriety in Puerto Rico and gain the attention of the FBI? Well, we have to start with a quick summary of the relationship between the United States and Puerto Rico. I want to point out this is a lot of history that will be summed up rather quickly, but it's needed to get the full picture of the motivations of the FBI and Rios. So let's start. Legislation in the early 20th century forged the relationship between the United States and Puerto Rico. This was years after military occupation, which was initially welcomed in 1898. During the next couple years, however, the U.S. would dismantle political and economical establishments already set in Puerto Rico. U.S. companies would then come in and either take over or create new economic opportunities in place of what they already had. This will be important for later. As for government, Puerto Rico had elected legislature, but the United States appointed the island's governor as well as other major officials. So what I'm saying is this is a blatant example of the United States imperialism. About 20 years later, in 1917, the U.S. Congress would enact the Jones Act, which subsequently led to an increase in American investments which boosted Puerto Rico's economy, but that money and growth, both politically and socially, didn't go to the citizens of Puerto Rico. It got so bad for citizens that at one point in the 1930s, the unemployment rate in Puerto Rico was nearly at 65%. It took decades for things to look up in Puerto Rico. Post-World War II, Puerto Rico's economy was thriving, and the United States of America finally allowed Puerto Rico to elect their own government in 1947, and in 1952, Congress approved of the island's constitution. This beam of light didn't last long, as the U.S. would impose tax laws in 1976 that was more beneficial to the United States rather than Puerto Rico. This all culminated in Puerto Rico's economic crisis, which arguably has been going on for half a century. So the U.S. has been in Puerto Rico for a while, and it hasn't been beneficial for Puerto Rico. This has led to many Puerto Ricans being frustrated, which is an understatement. But one of those Puerto Rican citizens was Filiberto Ojeda Rios. Puerto Rico is an uncooperated territory of the United States. However, many Puerto Rican citizens consider Puerto Rico its own country. Filiberto Ojeda Rios was born in 1933, and by all accounts, Rios was an extremely smart man, getting into college at 15. Influenced by the history between the United States and Puerto Rico, Rios helped create the Armed Revolution and Independence Movement, otherwise known as MIRA. This movement held many different organizations within it, but in total, it was responsible for over 100 bombings in the United States between the 70s and early 80s. However, Filiberto Ojeda Rios reportedly fled to New York to avoid prosecution in Puerto Rico sometime after aiding in creating the movement. In New York, Rios would create the Armed Forces of National Liberation from Puerto Rico, known as the FALN. Infamously, this group would be responsible for the 1975 Francis Tavern bombing. An unsuspecting Manhattan crowd were enjoying their lunches on January 24th, Inside the hallway of the building they were eating at would hold a briefcase that held 10 pounds of explosives. At 1.29 p.m., an explosion that would kill four people and injure more than 50 others would occur. The stairway and hall would be destroyed, and the glass of the windows would shoot out into the street. However, the base of the building was made of brick and was left standing. In the ensuing investigation, the Armed Forces of National Liberation from Puerto Rico took credit. It was in retaliation from a bombing that occurred in Puerto Rico that would kill three people and injure others. The group blamed the CIA, and the reason it is assumed that the bombing was in retaliation was because of a note found nearby. It states, You have unleashed a storm from which you comfortable Yankees cannot escape. Many roads led to dead ends for the FBI and CIA until three years later, in 1978. An accidental explosion gave the organizations the lead they were looking for. A man named William Morales was disfigured after a device he was working on in his home went off. Obviously accidentally, unless he wanted to do that. William Morales would turn out to be a part of the FALN, the group responsible for the 1975 tavern bombing. And Morales was the group's explosive expert. Inside Morales' home, the FBI and the CIA found a surplus of explosives as well as explosive materials. This landed William Morales 89 years in jail. However, this would be the only arrest in some relationship to the tavern bombing. As of today, no official arrests have been made for the 1975 bombing. However, one of the leaders of the FALN, Oscar Lopez Rivera, as well as 15 other of the organization members would be arrested later in 1980 for trying to overthrow the government. Today, the Francis Tavern is a museum and restaurant open for business if you ever wanted to go. These are early examples of why Filiberto Ojeda Rios was on the FBI's watch list. The FBI would truly start to hone in on Rios during 1970 when he helped found the Boracua Popular Army, aka Los Macheteros. Some places I've read it was meant for machete wielders, while others I've read said cane cutters. 
but you get the idea. This group would be responsible for many bombings inside the United States as well as Puerto Rico. However, the bombings in Puerto Rico were usually towards United States property, like federal buildings or aircraft. Los Macheteros was created to defend the island of Puerto Rico from invading forces this being the United States of America. The US imposed officials and governments for Puerto Rico, while also still occupying parts of Puerto Rico. Many Puerto Ricans felt the devastation of the choices the US made on their behalf, hence creating many people who would want to fight back, which kind of sounds familiar for some reason. Anyway, this is what gave Los Macheteros the aura of freedom fighters. However, I want to note the FBI reported only 5% of Puerto Ricans supported Los Macheteros. But again, that's from the FBI, so take it with a grain of salt. The Los Macheteros' first notable incident was when they tried to hijack a police vehicle in 1978, leading to a Puerto Rican officer's death. The officer was Julio Ramon Rodriguez Rivera. Because the group would take responsibility and it was considered a terrorist group, the FBI would be appointed to the case. In 1979, the group would be responsible for eight bombings that took place in federal buildings in Puerto Rico. In December the same year, Los Macheteros would be responsible for attacking a United States Navy bus, killing John R. Ball and Emil E. White while injuring nine others. They would also be responsible for the attack on USS Pensacola three years later in 1982 that led to the death of sailor Daryl T. Phillip and injuring three others. It wasn't just attacks and bombings though. Los Macheteros would also rob numerous financial institutions, including Wells Fargo, in which $7.1 million was stolen. That's more than any GTA heist and was one of the biggest heists in America at the time. This is what sparked the fuse for the FBI to start hunting down Los Macheteros. So let's talk about that bank heist. On September 12, 1983, the largest American bank heist would take place. It seemed to be a normal day for the employees, until one of them held the other two at gunpoint and then would later drug them. This employee was Victor Garina, which apologies for butchering that name, which I don't know if I should apologize, but whatever. And he would load up roughly $7 million into a rented car and never be seen again. The drug that Victor injected into the other employees would never be identified. However, the intended use of knocking someone out didn't work on them, as the employees stayed conscious during the whole heist. The heist itself was planned by Seguera Palmer, who lived in Puerto Rico. He had contacted Victor through a payphone to orchestrate the whole operation. Palmer claimed that the heist was a political act and the money would advance the move of Puerto Rico's independence. Juan Seguera Palmer, a co-founder of Los Macheteros, an insurgency group within the Boracua Popular Army, campaigned for the independence of Puerto Rico. The FBI's eyes were already on another co-founder, Filiberto Ojeda Rios, but the Great Wells Fargo heist of 1983 would make the FBI's approach much more aggressive. In 1985, raids would be conducted all over Puerto Rico, eventually gathering 19 individuals acquainted with Los Macheteros. Three years later, in 1988, nine men would be tried in federal courts. This included Juan Segura Palmer. However, the charges were all over the place from money laundering to trying to overthrow the government, which fucking rad dude. Nine men were found guilty and Juan Segura Palmer would receive a 55 year sentence. However, President Bill Clinton, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, offered the Puerto Rican prisoners clemency in 1999. Juan Segura Palmer took that offer up in 2004 and was released. The actual man who robbed the bank, Victor Jarina, was never caught and is still on the FBI's most wanted list. During the time the FBI and federal marshals conducted their raids in response to the Wells Bank Fargo heist, the FBI would get into a gunfight trying to apprehend Filiberto Ojeda Rios and were successful in doing so. They got him in 1985 and Rios would face trial in 1989. However, he was found innocent on all charges filed against him for the shooting at FBI agents during his 1985 arrest. After the defending attorney argued Rios had been denied a speedy trial, this was mainly due because of the defense constantly stalling, Rios knew he better call Saul, and it worked out for him, as Rios would cut his ankle monitor and flee during this time, becoming a highly wanted fugitive for the FBI. Filiberto Ojeda Rios would be in hiding for 15 years. He would skip bail in 1990 and it wouldn't be until 2005 till the FBI were to find him again after engaging in a gunfight with him. In between this time in 1992, the court sentenced Rios to 55 years in absentia and fined $600,000 for his roles in the Wells Fargo heist. Absentia means they proceeded with trial even though the person wasn't there. It's like telling Air that it's in trouble. The controversial death of Filiberto Ojeda Rios occurred on September 23, 2005. According to reports from the FBI, there was a surveillance team who had spotted Rios armed in his home. It is important to note that Puerto Rican officials were not notified of this raid or surveillance. The FBI would then try to enter the residence of Rios, and supposedly Filiberto opened fire on the agents. However, many Puerto Rican activists, as well as just people in general in Puerto Rico, believe that the FBI initiated the gunfire and that the plan wasn't to apprehend them, but rather take out their target altogether. Filiberto's widow would also share the same sentiment, claiming the FBI opened fire when they entered the house. 
However, the lead agent, Louis Fratisili, would state, he started the whole thing. He fired first and wounded an agent. Now, obviously, they didn't say if the FBI announced themselves or not. So it's unknown if Rios was just trying to defend himself. From FBI reports, Rios had fired 19 rounds with eight of them striking federal agents. One agent was critically wounded. That's when the FBI hostage team would return fire and surround the house. Within that quick little gunfight, Rios would be hit once. Through the neck and out the back. The FBI and Rios would then be involved in a 22-hour standoff. Within that time, the FBI airlifted their injured out, a move highly criticized because Rios was also injured at this time. 18 hours within the standoff, the FBI would get a new crew to try different tactical entrances. It is unknown if Rios was dead at this point, but after the standoff ended, the autopsy showed that the injury wasn't critical, and if Filiberto had received aid, he would have survived. However, he slowly bled to death due to the gunshot wound. The FBI investigated themselves and said they were justified with using deadly force which, that's pretty neat. In the aftermath of Filiberto Ojeda Rios' death, many protests arose, in Puerto Rico as well as in the United States. In Puerto Rico, all sides in divided territory banded together to criticize the FBI. Many protests and strikes aimed their rage towards United States corporations. At Rios' funeral, all the independence organizations from Puerto Rico gathered to mourn, putting down their differences to celebrate this man's life. The new leader of Los Macheteros stating, They made a mistake. The trumpet of liberty still caused us to the struggle. From what I've read, Filiberto Ojeda Rios was a Robin Hood figure in Puerto Rico. The way many saw him was someone who took back money and independence that was rightfully theirs from those who stole it. The history between the United States and Puerto Rico also propelled Rios up. And the controversial killing of him just led to him pretty much being a patriot. Now again, this is what I've read. If you have any information, I'd love to hear about it. But that's why I'm going to end today's video. All my sources are going to be in the description, so if you'd like to read into more, you can look at those or you can just look it up by yourself. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, please leave a like. And if you don't trust the FBI, subscribe. Alright, bye.